Just, um, just, just making it more complicated than it needs to be. And that's, you know, I have a problem with that where I hate, like, moving things around. I'd rather just... Well, me too, but I just feel like this, extra of something. <laughs> this mixer is just not doing me any favors, and I don't, I don't know where the problem is. Yeah, I just it, feel like the issue was like, you know, the problem. You know, I have my, I had my microphone plugged into the mixer, right? So mm-hmm. then you have the gain right next to that, right? Then uh, I have the the main mix sort of, you know, level, right? The output of the mixer that okay. I can adjust, and then I have that going into the line in on the zoom. But then for some reason that also has, you know, you can adjust the, the you know, recording level. Hmm. It's too many It's too many different points for you to adjust the levels. I think that makes it too easy to screw things up. Yes. You just want to be able to I want set one. it and leave it. And right. That's why, I, the that's why I got this Fethead thing is like now I just have my uh, level set in uh, the Zoom and then that's it. And then anything that yeah. happens after that is really just so that me and you can hear it and it yeah. sounds okay. Yeah. And you could leave it in like, you know, the H6 has four inputs in it, so you could right, exactly. just that, run it into the... four and always like leave that level like that. Exactly. Right. Um, Do you have the uh, the pad switch what? for that input set? Cuz that like automatically lowers it like 20 dB, doesn't it? Oh no, yeah, I do. That's not good. But no, I it's it's fine, really, well, I but I mean al- I better leave it alone for now though. Why do yeah, I have that? But I, but I wonder if that is affecting what you're hearing. But I mean, I have the gain set on like two. Right, but I think that the the padding right, I, like adds it in. All right, to I'm it. gonna I'm gonna do it. Yes, let's just see what happens. And if it doesn't do anything, then you just yeah, go back. That that didn't do anything. That made it worse. Yeah. Well, maybe it was maybe it was turned off. Oh yeah, it, it already was turned off. I just turned okay. it on. That's why. Right. <laughs> anyway, never mind. This is what people listen to this podcast for is, is us, oh, yeah. uh, you know, fielding technical difficulties. This stuff is hard. Harder than it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you see this little thing I got on my microphone? I got like a little, uh, like a four pack of these extensions. So oh. I, I don't, I can, I wanted to be to able get... to lower this down uh-huh. so I could have it off camera if I wanted uh-huh. to. Yeah. And just by having like this like extension, I and I it came with four of them, and I could make it like really long if I wanted to. That's but pretty neat. I feel like there's something about the just this little piece right here that makes it look yeah. significantly more professional. Like it's one of those sure. I mean, uh, it already looks pretty professional. <laughs> just I mean, compared to what I've got going over here, but uh, it sounds but, good. But yours so sounds I don't better. Change it. it. Mine doesn't sound better. It just also sounds good. Hmm. Yours, yours sounds uh, very good. In fact, I did a little bit of research. Like, oh, maybe I'll get, like, I was checking out the SM7B versus the RE20. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> and I've I've come I've kind of come to the conclusion that I think everybody uses the Sure SM7B because everybody else uses the Sure <laughs> SM7. That, that it's seems just like, to be the case. I think like if you want to look like you're being a professional podcaster or whatever, you get the SM7B. Yeah, but, but like you know, from everything I've read, I feel like if I was going to buy one of those and I was worried about how it sounded, I would 100% get that electro voice. Yeah. I mean, this is what people use in radio, and you can't see right. them, so they don't care right. about you know the right. clout that they would get by seeing that microphone. I mean, that is a little bit ugly, but it does also come in black. It does. It does. Yeah. And I kind of got the gray because I have a lot of gray down here. I just wanted it to look a little yeah. different. Uh, but the thing that sold it for me is that when I record voiceover – I had, I had a real problem where I was always struggling being different distances from the, the mic. And that's oh, like the whole right. thing with the, this. Is the that proximity have like that. effect. Yeah. So if you get yeah. close, it's not going to sound too much different than like kind of being yeah. back here. And that, I don't know that's if mine does huge for me. If I get real close, does that sound different to you? I mean, it, it, a little bit. But, you know, what I was doing before made it really sound different. Like yeah. on my microphone. Like that sounds pretty good. But here, yeah. I'm, I'm sure if I like got up on it like this, it would sound yeah. quite a bit different. It's, it's a little bassier, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I want to yeah. be back here, and right. if I I can generally have it recording my voiceover from a specific distance, right. uh, and it doesn't always have to be exactly the same, I can get the same sound from it. Every year, I say I'm going to learn more about audio this year. Yeah, and then and I that never do. Happen? No. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's the same reason. Like I can't hear you know, like the sounds that CRTs make. And I just wonder if I can't do it. Like I can't, oh. like I don't know what's right and what's wrong. 
I just know. I, th- oh, I think you should just be happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that I am. But every year I keep on saying I should learn more about it. And then I, I never do. Yeah. Hey, so you know what TV show I've been watching lately? Hmm. Actually, What's I have that? a couple. I have three TV related topics to quickly discuss. Oh, cool. Uh, I've been watching The Rockford Files. Did you ever watch The Rockford Files? I know the like, name. I, I can't no. tell anything about it. It's 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 pretty a long running show, right? I it was on for like six or seven seasons. It's like nineteen seventy four to nineteen eighty. Oh, okay. So, but you know, it stars James Gar- James Garner, who's one of my favorite actors. And mm-hmm. uh, when I was growing up, my my mom used to, they would show like a rerun of Rockford Files like every Saturday afternoon or something. Right. And so my my mom would always watch it, and so sometimes I'd watch it with her and. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a very good show. I really like it. But uh, I mean, I'm not here to try to sell anybody on watching the Rockford Files, although you can watch it. <laughs> you can watch it for free on uh, the Roku channel. OK, but um, uh, which you don't have to have a Roku to watch the Roku channel. You can just install the app on uh, like, you know, your phone or, or uh, a tablet. But anyway, uh, but, you know, one of the defining features of the Rockford Files is the theme song, which I think is one of the greatest TV theme songs of all time. Uh, I don't know it, but if, if I heard it, would I immediately recognize it, you think? I mean, I would hope so, but who knows? If you never watched the Rockford Files, and I don't know, maybe you wouldn't. But you if know? it's iconic, you probably heard it other places. Maybe, maybe. But that got me started thinking about, like, what were, like, what are the greatest TV theme songs of all time? And, like, for me, it was, like, the first, the first ones that popped into my head were Cheers, Ra- uh, Rockford Files, and Magnum PI. Oh, Magnum PI is pretty you know, pretty darn good. You know, that was on Night Night Rider. Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh Miami Vice. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I mean, those are those are just great themes yeah. in their own and they're not like corny or anything like that. No, Later on no. like in the 80s, like a lot of the TV yeah. themes got pretty pretty corny. And and that's and well, that's especially okay, the though. sitcoms, I think. Yeah, especially. exactly. Like Full House. Those are a yeah, little oh, cheesy yeah. side. Yeah. But that's I, I couldn't imagine Full House with any other theme song, though. No. Like, it just wouldn't work. Like, it works yeah. for that. You know, kind yes. of the same way with, like, Saved by the Bell. You know, like, oh, you yeah, can't that's imagine. Oh, yeah, that's super corny, but it goes very well with the show. Yeah, and that's like a, yeah. that was like a Saturday late morning show, I think. At least growing yeah. up, it was always on, like, like 10 or 11. Yeah. Like, on Saturdays. But, uh, so speaking of Magnum P.I., though, mm-hmm. um, so I was watching, uh, was watching football last night, you know, yeah. on, and it was on NBC, and so of course they're they're using the opportunity to try to get people to watch these uh, mid season, you know, shows that they're they're launching. You know, I guess these right. are like the re- the replacement shows for other shows that got canceled. And uh, I saw that they're kind of like relaunching Night Court. Yes, yeah, like so, yes. like they still have John Larroquette, although it seems like now he's the prosecutor. From what I'm like, sort of gleaning out of the commercials. And Maybe, then like, I think and then like the judge is like Harry Stone's daughter or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Know? But I thought, I mean, I'm going to give that a shot. You know, like I don't, my expectations are not very high, but to me, like it's worth checking out at least. For sure. And if, for sure. If it I, sucks, it, I won't be shocked. But exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I remember being really surprised when I heard that they're that they're making that. Um, and I think John Larroquette is the only one that's coming back. I mean, from what I, that's the only one I saw in the commercials that, yes, yeah, and it, but, it's I I I appreciate the fact that these take place in the same continuity, right? And they're just not yes. like, re, like redoing it, right? That's what I like, and that gets me to what I was going to say, is that you know at the second half of the commercial is that they're also relaunching Magnum PI. I see. I thought they did that already. I, I mean, if they did, I didn't know about it. This is okay. the, yesterday. The commercial I saw was the first I've seen, but I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not real plugged into what goes on on TV. Yeah, but to me, that looked a little bit more like lame. Yeah. Well, so I, I mean, if I you thought. were seeing that, then you knew that. Did you know that they have like they have a like a new show of a uh, Quant- Quantum Leap? Yeah, I think I already knew that. Yeah, but I haven't. Yeah. I haven't watched it. I never watched Quantum Leap. Oh, originally. okay. I mean, that, and that not, makes sense. Not for, not for any good reason. Like, it's not like I don't think that Quantum Leap doesn't look cool or something. I just... Right. It's cool because it takes place in the same the same continuity. And, yeah. uh, you know, but like 30 years later or whatever. And 
the the very end, the finale of the original show, it talks about like uh, Sam Beckett, like the main character is what's his face, uh, like never came home. Like it says, it says oh, he gosh. never never returned home. So he's still oh. like out there somewhere. He's he, yeah. apparently he does not appear in the show, but they like talk about his work and everything. And what's kind of cool is the way it connects is um, uh, Ernie Hudson, who was uh, you know from from Ghostbusters, he's most well known for. But he yeah, was in an yeah. episode of quantum leap like back in the day and he was like apparently like he was saved by sam beckett and like he is like in this show like he went on to survive and then like is help helping like with the project oh well, that's cool yeah yeah uh um i mean i like i watched like the first episode with i when i was visiting my brother and we watched it and uh i mean it's it's, it's pretty it seems to be pretty decent uh i was a little disappointed it doesn't have the theme song in it at least in that first episode it didn't that i saw <laughs> i don't remember the theme song so that's okay. okay yeah hey did you ever watch uh that show uh highway to heaven do we talk about this already highway not, to heaven we never talked about highway to heaven but yeah i couldn't tell you really anything about it except for like the opening credits oh all right he's like my, walking my, down the, uh, the highway right like walking uh, like hitchhiking. yes yeah yes yes my uh, my Nana was like she she loved uh, Michael Landon. You know, was the star of the show. Yeah, right. Uh, him and a guy named I forgot Gordon French was the other guy. Gordon French, <laughs> and um, but my my Nana was a huge uh, Michael Landon fan. Like she loved uh, Bonanza and mm. she loved Little House on the Prairie. And so oh, you know, that's, that's she show. watched uh, she watched Highway to Heaven just because it was. I mean, I think she would watch you know Michael Landon like read the phone book. You know, as people say. <laughs> Because he had uh, kind of like 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 a flowing mane of hair, right? He had very good hair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, th- there's a show they could redo. That was a good show. Yeah, I thought. I mean, it's, it, the the premise it seems like it would be an interesting juxtaposition to today. I guess it'd be interesting to put that into yeah today's world. Yeah. Although you know, people it might be a little too religious. I mean, isn't that what he's doing? Is he's like helping people like become better people so that they can. No, he's, he's like, it's like people are stuck in some kind of jam. Okay. You know, and he comes and helps them. Okay. And he's not like, but it's a, like, like he's, an angel, is he? He is an angel, yes. Okay. He's sent by God. But they don't, I mean, they don't like shove it down your throat. But I mean, yes, right. that the premise of the show is that like, he's like an angel trying to earn his way. I forgot, it comes out over the course of the of the series why like, you know, he's trying to just get into heaven or become an angel. And so like paying his penance basically is him yeah. going around and helping all these people. But it's just like, I mean, it's not that much different from the A team, except that it's got sort of the religious <laughs> angle. You yeah. know, I mean, he's still just a, a person helping people that need help him and yeah. him and the guy, I forgot Gordon French's character's name. He's the one that always wore the Oakland A's hat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, that those are your three your three shows. Yeah, I, I got nothing else. To say. I was just saying that <laughs> I've, know, been, I've, I've been I've been enjoying, but not binge watching the Rockford Files. Like I just watched like one, and then I'm like done for the day. That's cool. Uh, like, that's a good. But I've been enjoying do. that, and I'm looking forward uh, Tuesday at eight p.m. The the commercial said I'm gonna check out uh, the night. So that's pretty thing. soon. I'll check it out too. We should we should do a, like a little micro review of it in the next episode. I I'd, I'd be down for that. That'd be fun. Yeah. I the I'm excited about the uh, I haven't watched the first episode, but the the Last of Us show on HBO premiered last night. Yeah, you know, based on the the game, yeah, yeah, the game, and apparently yeah. it's 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 pretty good. So uh, I'm, I, ne- I'm, I never played I never played the game, so I don't know uh, if I'd be well. This lost is just or something. You know, it it is retelling the first game like over the course yeah. of the season, apparently. Uh, but you know, it adds in like additional information. But I'm excited because it seems like one of the first shows to like really like adapt the game story and kind of saying like oh we're just going to like pick like little pieces from it that people would know and then throw everything else out the window and roll with it yeah that's pretty Um, cool i'm looking forward to that but what i've been watching just like very few and far between um it's on it's on amazon prime but it was on something else before there's only three seasons of it the show called louder milk has uh has ron livingston in it from office space Oh yeah, and, and he, Band of Brothers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always think of him as from yeah. Office Space, uh, but you know, he's like a recovering alcoholic, and he runs like a uh, like a recovery group 
and uh, he's like he's kind of like an asshole. Like that's his and thing. swingers. Like, he was also in yeah, swingers. exactly. Of course, yeah, yeah. He's the guy that says everything today has been has been prologue to like the rest of our life or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's it's pretty good. Uh, I was maybe expecting it to be a little bit funnier, but it's it's it has some like dark humor in there, and it's uh, it's pretty good. It's all like streaming on Amazon Prime, and I just like him. I mean, I've ever, I've always liked him since I got I guess like. Swingers is probably the first thing I saw him in, but then Office Space, because I just think he's, like, really good at just being super relaxed. Like, he, like he's just laid back all the time. Yeah. Just kind of, you know, like, sitting there and is, like, you know, with his, his coffee, just not, not caring about anything. Just totally at ease all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's good at giving that impression. So yeah, kind of and, and I, I agree. He's a good actor, and I enjoy everything he's been in. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, I always think in Office Space about the scene where like he's sitting at his desk, and he's already sort of pushed over mm-hmm. whatever that wall is that was on his desk, and he's sitting there playing Tetris on his computer, and he's eating Cheetos, <laughs> but like he just dumped the bag of Cheetos onto his desk, and he's eating them <laughs> off the desk, you know? And then Lumberg comes by, and he's like, you know, Lumberg, get out of here. You know, I'm busy. I got a meeting with the Bobs in a few minutes. <laughs> It's not that I don't like my job. So I just don't yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> that is a great movie. And that that movie that was a huge flop in the theater. And then as soon as people saw it on videos where it really gained its following, I think. And I was I, I was among those. I I almost had a chance to see it in the theater and I didn't. I think I saw the uh the classic John Travolta and um I think Christian Slater action movie broken arrow instead it's like a john woo movie it's like a second i'm I'm pretty sure i saw that broken arrow in the the theater because i remember we would my friend and i we would go see if it was john woo we're like oh yeah like fate because face off was also john woo right yeah i think face off was after broken arrow though i think broken arrow was this movie after hard target with uh that one i don't van damme oh i don't think i've ever seen a jean-claude van damme movie like I need to. It's not like I don't want to. You're, you're not really like missing blood much. Like Bloodsport. I want to watch I mean, Bloodsport blood is good. Bloodsport is what I would. I'd I'd always imagine Bloodsport being what a Street Fighter movie should have been. Yeah. Where it's like this kind of this private tournament of like crazy yeah. characters. It doesn't need to be uh, what it ended up being. Yeah. Anyway, before we go any further, we should probably <laughs> let people know that they're uh, listening to or watching. Episode 13 of Here's My Question for You. And this is the first episode that will be simultaneously released on uh, podcasting platforms and YouTube. Day so, and date. Is that what it yes. was like? Uh, people like do term. say that. Yeah. And so, the, we, so decided, we decided to do that because it doesn't, it really was of no benefit to anybody doing it the other way, I think. And people no. were kind of annoyed, I think, on our Patreons being like, oh, you're just like spamming us with this stuff. Yep. That's people how didn't I like felt respond anyway. at all to it after a little while. And, uh, yeah. minus, if we're going to try to grow the show, we yeah. at least should make it so that people can watch it from day one and discuss it, not like yeah, four months. I would months rather after just the... grow it as its own thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, as I told you before the show, I don't. I'm not bringing anything to the table today. You, you've for, had, you've been run through the ringer. Oh I mean, you can, no, you, can you no like idea. tell us what? like what? Because I mean, it's been what? like storm after storm for you. And yeah, today's like the. I think the, today is the first day I want to say of 2023 with no rain. Jeez. So uh, I, I sent you those pictures of how bad my neighborhood was flooded. So that was fun. Is that the worst that your neighborhood has flooded like ever? Uh, it might be. Yeah. I mean, we've had uh, some floods that are, you know, almost as bad, but I feel like that one was worse. Yeah. Has anybody like lost, like had any significant damage from it that you know of at least? I mean, I'm sure you're not going. No, but it always just, it always just makes me nervous because it's like, you know, the streets are completely flooded. Like it's coming up my front walk and it's just, if it, if it was a couple more inches, then it would get under my house, you know? Like, and then, like, it'd be just, like, running down that wall. So there'd be no stopping it, essentially. I mean, probably not, you know. I mean, and there's no... You can't get, like, a sump pump down there. 
I mean, you could. I mean, like... I, I could. I, we actually, because this, uh, this uh, our sewer pipe, this is all brand new sewer pipe. And if you can see, how do I have to move my finger? Uh, <laughs> right there, you see that little piece coming up? Yeah. That's a hookup for like a sump pump. Oh. So I could I could definitely put a sump pump down here and I could hook it straight into the sewer line. You could get like a jackhammer and make a big pit for it. Yeah, you'd, ideally then, you'd want to do that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I have back here in the basement, but hopefully yeah. I'll, I'll never... Like, well, originally we were going to turn this into a laundry room, and that's why we had to do that. But then, well, it might it's be not a, fate, not a really. laundry room. That, I, I mean, I'd feel a lot less nervous if it was just a washing machine down here instead of all my stuff. That's for yeah, sure. Exactly, exactly. But, and yeah. I mean, I'd be most nervous about that arcade machine. Of course, is that like the thing that you're? Because everything else is kind of up. You can you can move stuff, but you can't move that. I mean, I guess you could. I wonder if you could get like a wooden pallet. I guess like, I could, yeah. And just like raise it up a little bit. I could, or I could just take it upstairs or something. I don't really know. So if stuff got down there, do you have like insurance for that kind of stuff? People were people people were recently asking me if yeah. do you have all that stuff like you know, your game collection insured? And that's something I've oh. been been no. looking into. But I wonder I should, if you like but... insure that stuff down there. I mean I should I'm just still not, you know. I've been collecting this stuff for so long that I think in my head I don't, I don't really see it as a, as being valuable because you know right. Well, I, in my here. heyday of collecting, it wasn't right, and now it's like I have this asset that I never intended to have. Where yeah, now I feel like oh, this needs to have like insurance. Yeah, well, I, exactly because if it, you don't want anything to happen to it, and yeah, and if something did, I mean. If something happened to all this, like I wouldn't replace it. I would just like take the money. And oh, like, I'm, either, I'm just no. gonna play the Mister from now on yep. and hundred percent quit YouTube, and that's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> really, you'd quit YouTube? I mean, I mean, I don't know if I would quit YouTube, but if if this entire like downstairs was like underwater, yeah, I would probably quit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like I. I mean, I definitely would take a break because I'd have other things to worry about. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know, because there's always been part of me that felt like, well, I have to have all this stuff because I have a YouTube channel. But it's like... Well, that's, that's how I, I feel I, a lot of times. But I don't think that's really true. Like, I think I used to think that, but that, now I just feel like if you had, like, a mister and a camera right. and a microphone and an editing computer, like, what what else do you need, really? You well, know, like, yes. I don't... But like, I'm for, trying to get away from the idea of, like, oh, if I'm going to talk about a game... I have to have like a physical copy of it to show on camera. Like, no, you don't. Well, you don't need. And if to, you feel like feel you do, like, like, like for us, we kind of do because if we want to show like it running on the yeah, original system and, your, and stuff like that, it gets. B-roll. Yeah. Well, you can have flashcards for that though. But yeah, if it's something that yes, I understand that for some systems you can't do that. I agree. Right. Like just yeah. But, but I don't. You know, I mean, if you all my systems were like wrecked yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I don't like. I don't know. Like, I. Yeah. I if if we did, if if I did keep on doing the show and that happened, it would significantly change the the course of what it includes. <laughs> I think. I agree. But who knows? Who knows? I'm not. I don't want to even want to entertain the idea of that. But you're right. Like I, a lot of the stuff that I have bought, I bought specifically because oh, I might need it. It's like kind of interesting. It might serve a purpose later on. Yeah. I mean, I think I have a lot of stuff like old computers and stuff where I just bought it. Like, I want to make a video with this, and then after that, I might get get rid of it. You know, right. like I kind of I bought it. Like, oh, I I want to buy this and make a video with it, and then you know, not because I wanted to keep it. So, well, anyway, anyway. anyway. <laughs> uh, so, so I mean, you just been like stressed out about all that stuff. I can, I yeah, definitely. Do you think it's going to clear up at this point, or is this? It, I mean, this is. Yeah, I mean, this was so yesterday. Over. Like, if I if I look at the weather app, like it's you know clear clear sailing for the next ten days. For the next ten days. So, in fact, tomorrow I'm very excited to say that the sun is going to come out. I haven't seen the sun in quite some time, so my vitamin D levels are probably at historic lows. <laughs> You're just going to go and spend all day outside. You should take a bike ride. I'm, I might. Well, I don't know about that, but I might just go stand out on my driveway for a while. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Like a, Shaw, like a Shawshank Redemption it. 
Like, right. Yes, <laughs> with the arms up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that sucks. I mean, is is it annoying to think about like, well, I suppose this is probably going to be a yearly thing. It's going to happen every year at this time. Yeah. I mean, if if that's going to end up being the case, it makes me like my wife and I have already kind of made comments about how maybe we're done with this house. Really? Not because this house, like, it's a nice house. I'm not saying my house sucks, but it's just like, you know, trying to track down these leaks and whatnot. And, you know, now we had some water dripping down from the ceiling. So now that has to get fixed. And, mm -hmm. like, you know, old houses are just a lot more upkeep. Yeah, yeah. And well, it's it's become it's, it becomes harder and harder to find people who will come work on it. You know, yeah. like I, I feel like, in fact, we just had a roofing guy come out to our house and, and I, I kind of told him what I thought. And, and he not only agreed, but he gave me more evidence to back up my my thought process, which is that you have all these like guys in their 50s and 60s mm -hmm. who, you know, tradesmen, you know, plumbers yeah. and electricians and blah, blah, blah. And they're all sort of trying to retire. Like we've yeah. had it's like quite CRT a few repairman. people. Yeah. We've had like quite a few people come out to our house who have, who have told us straight up like, yeah, I'm trying to retire. Like, I'll, I'll do this for you, but I'm trying to retire. <laughs> but then there's no because I feel like our generation had it just like jackhammered into our brains. Like you have to go to college, you know, yes. and like if you don't go to college, you're going to end up being a plumber or something as, as though yep. there's something wrong with that. And now because of that, I feel like there's a real shortage of uh, skilled uh, tradesmen. Yeah. It's it's very true. Like and, and the thing with the CRT repair are people that have no formal training. It's always like I always like around here, especially like in Kentucky and stuff. It's like, well, I know a guy who yeah, can do right. this, and it's like right. that person knows how to rig it up so that it will work, but like right. not in a way that is that'll last or is not a fire hazard or something like that. Right. That is not what we want. Like exactly. You know, we're, we're happy to pay the appropriate amount of money for yes. an expert to come correctly fix whatever our problem is. But the hard time, the problem is finding somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And like we don't live that far from like a major city, you know, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. But then you'll you'll call people and be like, oh, yeah, I'm over here in Davis or whatever. And they're like, oh, I don't drive out there. And it's like <laughs> it's 15 minutes away. Like, what are you talking about? But, but the thing is, they you know, don't need to. What can you, right? Just, like, there's exactly. no reason. To yep. subject themselves to something like that. Yeah. But anyway, I don't want to spend episode 13 uh, complaining about, well, it's, you know, especially when, you know, over 13, right? We should we just well, talk about yes. bad luck but, stuff. But, you know, it's like these, these problems are big problems for me because frankly, they're, you know, to quote Senna, uh, they're big problems to me because they're the only problems I have. So, uh, First but in the grand... I guess. Well, kind of, it's just like, oh, I'm getting a little bit of water leaking into my basement, and I had to put a couple of you know containers out uh, to catch some dripping water during a torrential downpour. Right, is really not, you know, compared to people you know losing their homes in mudslides yeah. and hurricanes and whatnot. It's like you know, yeah. To me, it's just more like it's the stress of like for over two weeks, I have to stay on top of all this stuff. My wife and I both, uh, yeah, you know, and and for some reason these storms always seem to come through overnight. So that I can't sleep, right? I have to get up every thirty minutes yeah. and come, you know, change out the absorbent mats and whatever. And like, I, mean, it, I would just like to end up sleeping the... down there if it was me. I mean, we do yeah. that whenever we have like tornado warnings. We don't like we. There's tornadoes around here, but we're like kind of in a really hilly area, yeah. So that I don't think that we would get hit directly with a tornado. Like it would probably go up the hill and like launch over it or however that works. I don't know. That's what that's what somebody told me it would probably that, do. That I mean that. I'm visual visualizing that in like the theater of my mind, and that looks really awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, launching a tornado off of a hill. Yes, I mean, yeah. like ramping up it for sure. Yeah, I mean, the thing you were saying about CRT repair though is that like CRTs are becoming something that nobody has except for people like us. Like yeah. everybody still owns a home, right, or mm -hmm. or lives in a home or or what? I mean, homes are still a thing, right? And so yes. like. You know, the fact that there's not people, but, but, you know, and I've said this before, maybe not on the show, but, I, you know, to somebody anyway, that like when I was in high school, it's not like anybody came out to my high school and said, hey, I'm from the local uh, electricians union or, or whatever. And if you're interested in entering the trades, here's what you do. Like, right. you know, we had people from colleges coming out and whatnot, mm -hmm. but it's like, you know, like looking at my life now as a you know middle-aged guy, it's like, well, you know, I could have. 
if I'd end up being an electrician instead of what I do, I think I'd be doing just as well in life and maybe I'd be a little bit happier, you know? Yeah, it's, but, it, totally, totally. You know, like that's how it is. Like where I grew up, they had this thing where people could go like during the school day to like learn trades and stuff like woodworking and stuff like that yeah. uh, called BOCES. That's what it was called in, uh, at least in, in Western New York. Uh, and people would go there and like learn all this cool stuff. But I think the people who didn't go think like, oh, only the dumb kids go there. The, yeah, the dumb kids that, have to go there was to that. the stigma, you know. Yeah, and but. that's like it couldn't be further from the truth. And you know, you think about it now, and it's like, like those people, like they just like know this stuff that I that I would be super handy and will continue to be handy yeah. forever. Yeah. And then while we're sitting here struggling to keep up with technology, or at least me, like, oh, you got to, you know, keep up with the technology. You know, always have to be like crank out, like try to be as creative as you can, crank out this stuff. Yeah. And it's like, man, if I could just sit there and say like, all right, I know it's a problem with this and here's how I fix it. Yeah. And then just, then you get paid like, like good money to do that. And it sounds, it yeah. sounds nice. Yeah. Sounds like, uh, sounds like a uh, office space at the end where. He burns the, burns down the place, and he's just like working as a construction worker, and he's a lot happier than working a, in an office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean, yeah. So you got a question or what? Is the question? Well, I mean, I got, I, I, got, I, mean, I, got is... I got three. Oh wow! Things hey, oh, what... for uh, this episode of Does It Slap or Should We Eat It? Okay, good. I was just gonna say we haven't done Does It Slap. We did one last time, didn't we? Or did we? Yeah, we did. Did we forget? <laughs> who knows who knows yeah. i mean i got i got like a running document on here i haven't uh, checked by the way i haven't checked our email account in a while so i don't know if well, anybody we, could, we should like stepped... hit the email like after we do this it, oh no, 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 no. Have, like, i'm sorry specific... i wasn't i wasn't trying to say we should do that because i don't want this to turn into a q a like like i don't want our entire show to be nothing but q a stuff but right. no, no no i was just saying that if if somebody has stepped up and said hey i want to make you a does it slap or should we eat it jingle Yes. I wouldn't know because I haven't checked the email. I've been a right. little distracted. If somebody so. has done that or wants yeah. to do that, put that yeah. in the, the subject line in all caps. Yeah. Yeah. Saying here's here's the jingle for uh, does it slap? I'll, or I'll, I'm going to go. I'm going to go one step further and just say, assuming that nobody has reached out yet to mm -hmm. do that, I I and I'm not even I'm not speaking for you. I'm speaking just for myself. I would be willing to pay somebody for that. Yeah. Oh, I would too. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not I'm not asking for free stuff. Uh so I, I mean the, I don't know what a jingle goes for, but you know, just somebody reach out and let me know. Yeah, I mean I if, if you're doing it for like I mean there's people do jingles all the time for radio and like right. and also uh like those medical like paid advertisements. Yeah. You you, you see a lot of those? You know what I'm talking about? You mean like the stuff that's on in the middle of the day when yeah, everybody's yeah. at work? Oh yeah, because the, the, they're targeted at people that are home during yeah. the workday because they're on you know disability or or you know whatever. Do you like have any particular that like you will that you remember that you'll never forget? Uh, does it have to be medical? No, it could be like any kind of like paid advertisement jingle. Okay, because the main one around here, but I believe it's national mm -hmm. that gets played constantly on like sports talk radio. Uh -huh. Is this uh, cars for kids ad? Okay, I know what you're talking about. And like about. the guy singing it's like one eight seven seven cars for kids, K A R right. and it's like awful. <laughs> but that's the point is that you'll never forget it because it's awful. Yeah. Well it's the the one I always think of that I hear a lot, it's uh for some drug called Ozembic. And it uses oh, like a a takeoff of the uh, oh oh it's magic, that song. And it's oh, it right. oh, can... oh oh Ozembic. Oh, I must have you seen know. that sounds familiar, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the one that I know the most. I'm yeah. sure there's plenty of others, but that is, you know, those are on in between, you know, like during the like the political ad season when that's like yeah. all it is, is like political act, like attack political ads, ads and, and like, then and like, and pills and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then like pills. Uh, anyways. Yeah. All so right. does it slap or should we eat it? That's what we're uh, doing now. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I kind of got a a, a, in a little bit of the idea for this, one of these things from you. Oh, Because, right. you know, oh, you're talking I'm about a, that, that Cincinnati or the, the National Sign Museum. 
that you saw. Yeah, because people talk. I can't about. believe you haven't gone to it. Yeah, I'm. Oh, my wife went. Yeah, uh, but it, I mean, that sounds pretty cool. And you said, "Who doesn't like neon signs?" Right. I have one right there. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's one neon signs. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Two. Yeah. TV remotes. Okay. And three, Nerf guns. All right. Well, I can easily <laughs> personally throw out Nerf guns. Not because okay. I don't think they're awesome, but like I've never owned a Nerf gun. I don't mm-hmm. have kids. If I had a Nerf gun, I'd have nobody to play with. Yeah. Like I'd be shooting at targets or something. So as awesome as I think Nerf guns are, uh, uh, I'm, that's getting yeeted. Okay. Right off, right off the bat there. Now, TV remotes versus neon signs, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, yeah. Primarily because, like, you know, especially with the way we watch TV and whatnot these days, mm. like, you know, I have an Apple TV. You can't even use it without a remote. Right, right. Although, I mean, I guess I could but use my But if they didn't exist, iPad. then you'd have to go up and hit buttons on it. Yeah, which that I'd be okay with. But... I don't know. Are you are you saying that like every neon sign on the face of the earth disappears or TV remotes disappear? I mean, basically, I can't I'm not going to be held responsible for neon signs disappearing. So I have to go with uh, I have to pick neon signs. I guess I mean, it already makes me sad. So like neon, see... neon signs slap and we yeah. eat everything else. Well, I mean, TV remotes slap too, but you know, if you're going to put them up against neon signs, you're you're not leaving me much choice. But <laughs> I mean, neon signs are already kind of dying a slow death. You know, if you look at yeah, you know, pictures of like you know, Main Street wherever you live, like 50, 60 years ago, and there was just neon up and down the street. Because I feel like these days you hardly see, unless you, you go into a bar, of course, there's you know neon beer signs. But outside of that, like neon is not nearly as much of a thing anymore, which. uh which is kind of sad because I feel like, you know, you know, the creating neon signs seems like a pretty cool like art form, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to, you're, you're blowing glass and whatnot. And... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is where I grew up. There was like it was a couple hours away from like Corning, Pennsylvania, I think it is, where they do oh. like a lot of the, the glass blowing and stuff. And we got to go yeah, there. I, I use their glass in my in my lab all the time. Yeah. That's I mean, Corning, it's, it's Corning like a, wear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. a, it's been around for a really long time. And believe it or not, you know, even cl- I'm not sure if, if it's close to there, but also like Zippo lighters are from like some like a like there was a plant that made Zippo lighters. Yeah. I did not know that. Did you did you ever I, have a Zippo? Oh, absolutely. When I was a when I, I still have it. Yeah, they're awesome, it, man. But they are so cool. Yeah, like when I was a when I was a smoker, I always used a Zippo. Yeah. Like what did yeah. what did it look like or what 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 it does just it look bl- like? It's just black. Like it's oh, okay. painted because somebody gave it like it wasn't I didn't go like choose it. Like a matte it. black? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And it just has the little Zippo uh, logo painted in the corner. But like I said, it was my friend gave it to me. And so I just always use that one. So it, that probably wouldn't have been what I would choose, but it's a pretty cool one. You know, hmm. I like the like if you get like the brass ones and then yeah. once they get a little bit aged and get like a patina on them, like those are the coolest Zippo lighters. I, I had one that I that was kind of like a brass and like uh uh like brushed metal brass yeah yeah that's it. what i'm talking about yeah, yeah it was i think i, I figured you'd a, have one with like a dragon on it or something <laughs> with a, with a, you know it's it has a like a dragon holding a crystal right no i didn't have anything that's what on i'm it. saying yeah but it, it, i think that that one i got it free from uh i don't know how it happened but i got on this mailing list and marlboro would send me birthday presents every year wow and uh that was one one year and I don't know if were, I still you were have like it. a loyal you were a loyal Marlboro smoker. Well, I it, back back when you could still smoke in bars and stuff, there was always yeah. like representatives that would go around and be like, "Hey, we'll give you what? a free pack of cigarettes if you, uh, you know, fill out this thing, and then we send you stuff like every year for your birthday." It didn't cost anything. Wow. It was just you know we didn't just, have that here, but I, I would have been all over that. Yeah, I mean, there's I was getting stuff for a long time. Like even would you like smoke after lights? I you seem like you smoke Marlboro lights. Yeah, I was right? definitely yeah. yeah. I was Marlboro hundreds? lights. Not not hundreds though, right? <laughs> no, no. no, I I smoked like the no filters. No, just kidding. No. Uh, my wife smoked uh, Camel lights. Yeah, those are good too. My dad was. I mean, was, no, they're was, not. Was you shouldn't camel. smoke. But if you're going to smoke Camel lights, pretty good. Yeah. And my mom you, smoked Camel non filters. 
until she quit. Jeez. I mean, that just, yeah, it sounds painful. Yeah. I mean, I dabbled in smoking non-filters for a while just because it was, you know, this is like when I was in like junior college and like everybody smoked and nobody had any money. So if you were smoking, somebody was constantly trying to bum a cigarette off of you. Uh, that's, you so you, if you were like, oh, yeah, they're, but they're non-filter, like multiple times people would be like, oh, never mind. Yeah. I mean, that's the same. You used to tell everybody that you drove a, like, yeah. a, drove stick. And, like, that's not was, why I drive stick. But, it's but just a was nice like side a big, effect. Yeah. A big part of it. Like you, nobody would want to borrow your truck to like help them move. Right. Right. It's smart. It's smart. It's like that feels like something that you would figure out like way later in life and you figured yeah. out at the perfect time. Yeah. For right. it to be really lucky. useful. Well, like I said though, that's not why we have manual transmissions. It's just, we, <laughs> we prefer driving them. It's just a nice side effect that right. it keeps people from borrowing our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, driving stick, it makes you less interested in driving like really long distances. Like if you, you wouldn't, would never want to drive cross country with it. Right. No, I'd be fine. I mean, the thing, if you're on the freeway, you're just, you're in, you know, depending on your car, you're in whatever the highest gear is, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth gear, and you're just mm-hmm. leaving it there. So, I mean, what sucks about uh, manuals, if you live, like if you lived in like the Bay Area or LA or Chicago or it's somewhere so where there's a lot of gridlock. Yeah. Because then you're constantly having to, you know, you know, shift in and out of first gear and whatnot because of stop and go traffic. But like I would... I would 100% take my car on a road trip. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, do you remember when you when you learned how to drive stick? Uh, yeah, it's just because we bought, like, our first car, we bought a old Volkswagen Beetle. So oh, it was cool. stick. So we had we had no choice. But, like, we, neither one of us. So did, when we so went to go look at the car. You? Nobody taught you. You were kind of. You've yeah, my mom, my mom taught me. Oh, cool. And was then, she pretty, I think my, pretty patient about it? Hmm. I'm only I, asking I mean, if my dad was like not patient at all with me about it. Yeah, I don't know. She, yeah, I mean, my mom is not an impatient person, but she's kind of a drama queen. So you know, she anytime I killed the car, and it's funny because I only killed the car a couple times, like yeah. the entire time she was showing me. But then she'd make a big deal about, oh my god, you know, it's like it's gonna on. break it. Yeah, or she would just be embarrassed, like oh. But uh, but yeah, anyway. So when we went to look at the car, uh, we had to take my wife's brother. We weren't married yet, but whatever. You know, we took my brother-in-law because mm-hmm. he was the only person we knew who knew how to drive a stick. So he drove the car to check it out, and we just like rode in the car with him. And then we, once we got the car, uh, my mom taught me how to drive it, and I think I taught my wife how to drive it. Were you patient with your wife teaching her how to drive it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. I just remember I mean, my, my dad ask, like kicking the have to floor, ask her saying that, like, "Push the clutch." Oh, I, just like no, kicking, I would, kicking the floor real hard. I I like to think I'm not that way with my wife, although I'm sure I have my <laughs> moments because I'm still a human being. But yeah, what are you talking about? You don't you? What you get angry? Do I get angry? <laughs> sure. I'm, kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Like I I, I feel like a lot of times people uh, like to give this air, like especially online, like saying, "Oh, I don't. I'm super patient. I don't get like angry about anything." Oh, anything anybody says online is yeah. f- at least 50% BS. Um, I mean, I, we haven't really talked too much about, like, we had mentioned what happened with Twitter, like what's been happening with Twitter. Uh, yeah. I just, I just want to throw this out there because it was, this was kind of like the point where I realized, like, I don't think I'm going to really use it anymore. Oh, is what happened? Like, well, so... It has not been like it's been like a totally fine experience for me because I I use a third party app for it on my phone called Tweetbot, oh, and yeah, that right. you pay like it's like ten dollars a year, and okay. it gives you like everything in in chronological order, no ads, no suggested tweets or people to follow. It's just like the yeah. information, oh, and right. then apparently like they wiped all access to those apps for like the people oh. who make them, just like out of yeah. nowhere, so it no longer works. To kind yeah. of the force people into using the official app, I think. And I'm like, I well, I, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I guess, I don't, I mean, I hate to be in a position where I'm defending Twitter, but I, I understand the logic of doing that just because, you know, if it's blocking ads, then, you know, Twitter's not getting any revenue. But, uh, but I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought up the Twitter thing because I, I wanted to talk about it just a little bit, although I think not in a way that 
breaks our guideline about not talking about, you know, divisive issues. But, uh, you know, I, I just feel like everybody assumes, you know, when anybody like us says that we're not using Twitter anymore, it's because Elon Musk bought it or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that's not a contributing factor, but, uh, you know, it's just that, you know, it's, it's still social media and it, it's just still kind of a cesspit, you know, and and anytime I make any comments, I mean, people have left comments on our on the videos for this podcast, but like, oh, if you. As long as you just stay in the gaming space, you know, Twitter's the same as it's always been. And it's like, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> go, go, you know, and they try to act like, oh, as long as you stay in the gaming space, it's okay. But, you know, it's like, go look at a tweet from like uh, John Lineman or like Modern Vintage Gamer and mm-hmm. start reading the replies, you know? Right. You know, and the, like, so like to me, the fact that a guy like John Lineman sometimes, you know, struggles a little bit with having to, you know, exist on social media, mm. I a hundred percent get it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so when you say like, Oh, it's no work, it's the same as it's always been. It's like, well, yeah, that's the problem. It's just like, that's like if somebody says that, you know, all well, the YouTube comments are the same as they've always been like, yeah, they're, they're horrible, you know? <laughs> so, you know, like I, you know, for me, I, I didn't make some conscious decision of like, Oh, I'm boycotting Twitter or whatever, but I just don't really, go on there anymore like i and i don't i don't miss it you like, decided oh, I, to... I, I can't get my twitter fix you know <laughs> i just i uninstalled the apps on my phone and my ipad mm-hmm. and like i i go check it every once in a while or especially if i you know like I, on a desktop like i went and that's what i do with i went Facebook. i went I... yesterday because i i tweeted out yesterday from our here's my podcast mm-hmm. uh account just letting people know, you know, it's a three day weekend, so the show's not coming out until Tuesday. So as long mm-hmm. as I was there, I went and checked my notifications on, you know, the classic gaming quarterly account as well mm-hmm. and then was done. And like Right. And that's kinda of, that's, that's fine. And that's a lot of things that we do is we just put out stuff that's like it's not really our opinion or anything. It's just like here's this thing. Here's what's what yeah. we did and this is like here's like this thing that's coming up. Or right. Something. And so I I like to think of it as uh you're just like you're celebrating your self esteem, you know. You're just right. like I'm not gonna let myself get pulled into that. I'm just gonna like I'm gonna be happy being me, and yeah. it doesn't you don't need to get like pulled down. That's good. It's good. I mean, I think that that's it's good to have like a measured, you know, you do, what what we do. It's like part of like what you need to do to like create stuff. To get people to yeah. see it and to know it exists, especially starting yes. out, for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. And then once you hit a point, it's like, all right, we don't have to really do anything else. Let's just, you know, say this thing is this thing exists, and here's where you can check yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean, I, the one thing I would say, I think it's you know, the sad thing about it is just like you know, the vast majority of people on Twitter and the vast majority of people in you know the YouTube comment section are just you know, good everyday folks, you know, who just want to let you know that they appreciate you or have, you know, something to say about the video you posted. That's, you know, trying to contribute to the conversation, Yeah. you know, and, and because of the, the few people that, that can't behave, it yeah. makes it so that guys like you and I are better off just either not, paying attention to anything anybody has to say or just not being active on the platform period yeah and i, and I think that sucks it's because it's a few people ruining it mm-hmm. for everybody you know because like i enjoy being able to interact with people yeah which know? is like but it's just know, like discord is, is great for that you know i think right but it's like if you were going to walk into a room with like a hundred people 98 of whom are cool people but you know that there's two people in that room that are going to try to punch you in the face while you're in there. And you're going to go in there and try to talk to these people and oh yeah, you like you got this and that and yeah, N64. You're be, like, looking but around. you have to constantly yeah, you have to constantly be on guard cuz there's two people in there and you don't know who they are who are going to try to punch you in the face while you're in there. Like that's what it's like being <laughs> like someone like us like on social media. Yeah, I will I we haven't had like too much of a problem i think that like everything is like our comments are 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 generally like almost like 99.9 percent positive and and good yeah 
Uh, and Try is like really, really good at <laughs> responding to like the negative comments and like kind of killing them with with kindness. Like he's he's yeah. he's super good at that. He just like yeah. will write out. And we also like we respond to a lot of comments. Well, I mean, mostly he does, and he always kind of writes out like above and beyond the amount of stuff that he really needs to to people in response, which is great. I think that that kind of thing, like even on like really old videos. It, like people appreciate that, but if people are, if someone's like is angry or like nasty about something, he's very good at just responding. It's like, well, the reason we did it is this, and um, like almost every single time, those people will be like, "I'm really sorry I reacted that way. I understand where you're coming from." Yeah, and then that's that's that. Like he's he's very good at that. Like you know, he's he he has a lot. He's like he has very thick armor for that kind of yeah. thing. I guess that's good. That's what you need. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so somehow we got there from keeping neon signs around <laughs> and and getting rid of yeah. TV remotes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, we got about we got about fifteen more minutes. If you uh, got something else. You oh, that's know. right. Because you you're taking your cat to the vet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does she need to get some shots or? Uh no, I think she's just not feeling well. So it's got. to that she eats something. At. That she... I don't know. Maybe. I'm not sure. That's what it's I was thinking. Stressful. She might have she gotten into something, you know. Does your cat throw up a lot? Well, not normally, but she is now. So that's what oh, I'm interesting. concerned about, you know. Like our cat just throws up every single day almost, it seems like. Because well, I think she... a lot of a lot of cats they just eat and eat and eat and eat. Because if they're they rescues, just go throw yeah, it especially up. like our cat was a rescue and I think that she's like, I yeah. I gotta eat this stuff because I might not yeah, I like, think you got to be more careful about like just giving them a portion of food, right? Instead yeah. of giving, you know, giving them like, you know, we give our cat, you know, she gets wet food and dry food. And the dry food is just here's a bowl full of food. You can yeah. have as much as you want. I think that's not really working. Yeah. But, yeah. Sometimes I'll see my cat throwing up far away and I, I, cause she like always like makes this noise and yeah. rides around. I've, I've taken at least one high frame rate video of her vomiting. <laughs> with Why my phone. would you do that? That's a very strange. <laughs> I don't know. Thing you know, because do. Do, do you have an iPhone? Yeah. Okay. So if you look through the pictures, sometimes they'll like whatever. Like the the app will make like a video of like here's like all these pictures from this time of year or yes. You know, I enjoy like, those. I do too, and it always takes like yeah. this like royalty free, free music and puts it to yeah. Like so, I've, and I thought it was so fun. It's like you know. uh like furry friends was it, and then it would like yes. show things of like the dogs, the cat, and then like it was like the cat throwing up oh, in gosh. slow motion. <laughs> wow! <laughs> like in the middle of this thing, a- it, it may AI have been at the very had, end of it, and like there's that's still like... some improvement uh, <laughs> there that needs to happen. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think that it improves it by putting it in there. I would be, I would be disappointed if it wasn't in there. It's, it's a pleasant mm-hmm. surprise when it shows up in there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do you want to pop open the email and see if uh, anyone's got a like a fifteen minute question? I mean, sure, we should check it anyway, just because I haven't checked it uh, yeah. in so long. So, uh, and you know, people have not. I I should really uh, get access to it so I can like log in and look at it. I too. Tr- I tried to give you, and you're like, oh, I don't want that because of the two factor. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, but I, I can... think that you should. Like, I yeah. Why, why am I the email sherpa? No, that's that's fine. That that's fine. I should I should get involved in it, um, just so that we like, you know, it, it it it's it's not that we're ignoring the email. It's just that you've been preoccupied with. Yeah, we got a lot of new emails. <laughs> Is there anybody saying we got a theme song for you? We should see if there's anybody said that in there, and we can we can use it in this episode. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not seeing any like that. No. Okay. So you want to just like open um, up that uh, the top the top one? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is from Nicholas. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, "Hi guys, just want to say thank you for the podcast. I've really been enjoying them." Oh, here you go. I would also like to specifically thank Corey. Thank you. <laughs> if it wasn't for him doing this show, I would have never discovered CGQ. Oh well, thanks. Oh so, wow. Well, there you go. Which is odd that I hadn't on my own since I follow all the other major YouTubers in this scene. So yeah, I guess, and you've like been on streams. And I guess stuff. that makes me a major YouTuber. So that's nice. <laughs> um, 
Oh, this is interesting. All right. Either way, here's my question for you two. All right. Uh, what hobbies did you really try to get into and then just stopped abruptly? Maybe you lost interest or you were only getting into it because a friend was. I guess the answer would be better if it's something that you actually put money into. Yeah, like if you bought supplies. I have too many to name here without boring you, but um, to mention a couple would be leather working and collecting Star Wars books. Uh, okay. I mean, I there was a point I used to collect uh, like movies. Like when DVD was fairly new, I would get a lot of movies as they came out. Uh, and then I just realized I can't do this in addition to collecting games if i want to have one thing i just seem to like yeah. pick one thing and like focus on that and i can do like other stuff on the on the periphery i guess but i like i ended up getting rid of almost all of my my movies i'll, I'll keep certain things of like my favorites and i will buy like a 4k uh blu-ray of say like movies that i really really love like very yeah. rarely you know like like terminator 2 like i bought that oh yeah in 4k you gotta have that did you see that in the movie theater? You must have. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw it. Yeah. I saw it opening weekend. Nice. And, and I think I saw it on Fourth of July. I, I'm pretty positive that I saw it on uh, July Fourth, nineteen ninety one. Is that? I feel like that. Is that not the day it came out? Yeah. Oh, it, it came oh, out. Okay. That it would have been a Saturday, I think. But it might have been a Friday. If it, if it came out on Fourth of July, then I saw it on. Yeah. On opening day, I mean, yeah. I saw it at the. Chautauqua Mall in Lakewood, New York. And, oh, nice. Uh, I mean, I've, I've talked about like how that's my, my favorite movie of all time. And uh, the yeah. year-end video that we did, a lot of people said that, because uh, I talk about this game, Unpacking, where it's just like unpacking stuff like with pixel art and like putting in, like setting your room. and like. Oh, yeah, somebody in my Discord was just talking about that game. It's great. It's great. Did you finish it? Yeah, yeah, it tells a little bit they of said story. That they, they said that the end made them cry. Oh, I mean, well, you reflect yourself, reflect yourself like okay, into well, don't, like this. Don't spoil it. It's it's definitely worth it, and it's like not a, right. an expensive game, and you can beat it probably like in like a night if yeah. you wanted to, or or two yeah. nights. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very good. But I talk about that, and then I launch into uh, how Terminator Two is <laughs> is my favorite movie, and it's like, man, that's like that's some serious whiplash. Is that that's your all time favorite movie? Oh, all time, yes. All right, and it's I've seen it uh, at least a hundred times. I I used to wow. come home every day after school, and uh, wow. I I, ta- I eventually taped it off a pay per view, and I would come home every day after school, and I would watch like the the back half of the movie from the time where they go and attack Cyberdyne systems to like the end of the movie. Like every day, I would come home yeah. and watch it. I loved it. Wow. I, I oh. saw. I think I saw it. Probably, probably only four times in the theater. <laughs> but then I yeah. had a chance well, that's when a they. Lot. I've never. But I've then never I saw this version in three D when they did a re-release a few years ago. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, well, so I, to answer Nicholas's question, there, I mean, I've definitely that's something I'm definitely guilty of. Like once I get interested in something, mm-hmm. like I get all super into it. Yeah. For however long I'm into it. You know, like, I mean, really the whole, you know, when I started my YouTube show, Mm -hmm. you know, I already had a pretty nice for that time digital camera because I got really into photography. So I went and I bought like a nice Canon uh, DSLR and I bought some lenses for it and uh, I ended up using that camera to start the show. But I never really, you know, stuck with doing, you know, digital photography because like I was into photography when I was like much younger, like with actual film, Mm -hmm. you know. And so I thought I would get back into it, you know, and I kind of didn't really, you know, I still have that camera and I still have all those lenses, but, you know, I don't use them for the show just because I think Canon cameras are, you know, at least Canon DSLRs are not ideal for as, video, uh, for sure. Yeah, for you video, can't, you know. You, you, nowadays, you need that, like, that clean HDMI output. And those cameras didn't, didn't used to do that. Well, just like that and like how the GH5 lets you record continuously for, right. you know, basically until the memory card is full mm-hmm. and, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, so I don't and it's a shame because I have some really nice lenses. But, you know, if, maybe if Canon ever came out with a, a camera that was more GH5 like I could get it. But mm-hmm. 
you know, and the thing is like, you know, lenses hold their value pretty well. So I could sell yeah. those, but camera bodies don't hold their value at all. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, so I've just held on to that stuff or just, but you know, I, I always do it with the intention. Like I'm going to, this is going to be a thing I'm going to be into, you know, like when I decided I wanted to start playing guitar again, you know, I got my guitar out and I, I tore it apart and like upgraded, uh, you know, the parts, like put new pickups in it and everything. And so that was kind of, you know, I bought some new pedals for it. And then I was like, oh, I want to get a bass, you know. And so then I went out and I bought a bass. <laughs> and then I didn't like that bass that much. So I went out and bought a more expensive bass. And, like, I still, you know, I pick up that bass, like, you know, most days and play it a little bit. But it's not like I'm taking it seriously. You right. Know? But it was but it was my intention. And it's some for some reason in my head, it is still my intention that, you know, like I was going to start taking lessons and everything. Yeah. I just don't. I always feel like I don't have time. You know, like you talked about previously about how, like, you know, there's plenty of time in the day and you just have to actually do it. And I, I definitely agree with that, but I'm definitely not good at that. Yeah. Where you just figure out like, Oh, I can do this. You, you come up with like little short term things that you can do every single day that distract you from the things you should be doing. That's exactly. What but I mean. what that tells me though, is that really yeah. like your hobby is more like tinkering with different things. And then yeah. once you get those things to the place that you want them to be, then you don't yeah. want to do that anymore. It's, it's more about like, like figuring it out than actually doing it. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Like I remember like, like little smaller examples. Like I really enjoyed buying a, a raspberry pie and setting mm-hmm. it up, but then I don't use it. You right. Know? Or yeah. like I use my mister, but I also, I got a lot of enjoyment out of, out of just setting that up. Or like I talked about last time, my little Ann Burnick, mm-hmm. uh, you know, emulation handheld. Like I had a great time setting and I probably spent more time setting that up than I've spent playing it. Yeah, possibly. I, I mean that's like everything. Because I just really enjoyed doing that, you know. So I, I wish, like, I feel like my ideal job probably would somehow involve setting things up for other people, you know. Right. Like if I could be yeah. like a, yeah. a home theater installer or something like that, you yeah. know, or or uh, restoring old cars for other people, something. And maybe like that's that. that's exactly it, you know. Uh, we had some friends in town, and uh, like I was like, oh, you know, I have all this. Like, here's what like the studio that I set up to like make videos and it's like, but I barely made any videos like last couple of years. Like I've done some, but I'm not using the equipment that I have to nearly the extent that I've set it up to be able to use. And then I you realized, like, but what? I haven't. Yeah. And uh, I'm just like, well, I wonder like maybe the enjoyment for me is, is figuring it out and getting yeah. it to where I, I could do any of this stuff. Yeah in the moment if I wanted to, but then I don't actually want to do it. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Cause I think I spend a lot of time worrying about like upgrading my equipment for the show or buying some new thing that will allow me to do some other thing. But then it's like, I feel like I don't really have the motivation yeah. to like really commit to the show at the level that I should. And then it's, so it's like, well then why are you buying all this stuff? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, a- I think maybe in my head, I just think that like, if I made it easy enough, because I do sometimes get frustrated because it's like, I just want to be the, I want to do the creative thing. Mm -hmm. And when you have to spend so much time wrestling with the technology, Mm -hmm. when all you're trying to do is be creative, it's very frustrating. Right. Are you You even just, just like setting up, you know, this thing I was trying to set up today. And it's like, what, what the F man? Like in my head, this all worked perfectly. Yeah. 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 I mean, do you, are you a big, are you big on, uh, updating firmware and stuff like the, the no, second I'm, you've seen I'm, that they're like it's available because no. i i know i it's like almost a sickness for me it's like oh these firmwares come up like you know oh do, does is there any new firmwares out for my wireless controllers yeah. and i just like will spend yeah. time doing that and uh i don't know like i spend so much time doing that and then i get it all updated and it's like well no, i don't have any time to do anything else <laughs> and that yeah. happens like Every week, I was like, I should set some time aside every Monday morning, an hour to update the yeah. stuff that I need to update. And then I only worry about it for an hour from like eight yeah. to nine on Monday morning. Wow. And then nah, then that's the only I, time. Then you got to wait wait a whole week to update stuff again. Yeah. I definitely don't have that issue. Okay. But, uh, I mean, like I'll see like, you know, like uh, Retro RGB just did a, a live stream the other day that a new firmware came out for the retro tink five X and I'll think, Oh, okay. I should remember yeah. at some point to take care of that, but I still haven't, uh, 
I still haven't. Yeah. So. Well, it's the same thing yeah. like on our live stream that we did last night. Uh, you know, tr- uh, I, <laughs> I've been telling Try to update his uh, analog pocket because uh-huh. there's been like so much stuff uh, coming out for it, like different open FPGA stuff, like different cores and everything. And I'm like, it's so easy. Just go and you download this script, put it on an SD card and run it. And it's like basically does everything. Yeah. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. And I'm like, actually, no, like I've been telling you this. I've sent you this, this link at least three times. Like, I yeah. want you to just do it right now. And he did it yeah. like on the stream and he looked, he opened up his firmware and he, he hadn't uh, updated the firmware since January, 2022. Oh, wow. <laughs> So there must be a lot of new uh, uh, functionality then. That oh, that he, he's, he has no idea. Previously. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's that's a big part of it, I guess. Like we gotta. And that's why I like the retro RGB site so much. Is it's it's hard to stay on top of like the new developments, whether or not you get to even like use that stuff. You need to at least try to be aware of it as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. So our I guess our hobbies are really just tinkering and getting stuff to the place. Where yeah. we can use them without problem yes. and then not using them. That's yes. I think that sums it up pretty well. Uh, and uh, I think that also sums up this episode. That does. Of, I think. Uh, of here's my question for you. Yeah. So we're ending a little bit earlier, but this is, yeah. this is uh, this week's episode, I suppose. I, I, yeah, we should think about how we can make the, and we can end these episodes even more awkwardly. Wow. I mean, unless someone takes their shirt off, I don't see how it could get much more awkward. I'm not taking mine off, so. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, show, you can you know where to where to find us. Yeah, you can keep doing that, please. Yes. And if anybody yeah. wants to uh, talk about making a, a jingle for yeah. Does It Slap. In exchange for cash. In exchange for cash, cold, hard cash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Send us an email at here's my podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And that's it. That's thanks. all that's all I yeah. got. That's all I got in the thanks. chamber. Anything else? I was just going to say thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. <laughs>